is Amarique, which is what Esso will be playing at Orchestra Hall this year. Uh, Varez programs a lot of interesting instruments, um, some that aren't really familiar to most people. Um, and one of those being the lion's roar, which is a percussion instrument mostly used uh, in like 20th century music. Um, and then I have Mayer here with us today. He's playing the lion's roar in Varez, and he's going to help us uh, learn how to actually construct one. Are you excited? I am very excited. So excited. So the first step in making a lion's roar is obviously making sure you have all of your materials, um, the most important being the head. So we're going to use a Remo Diplomat 16 inch clear head today for our lion's roar. Next you want to get a needle or something sharp enough to poke through the head and make a hole that is going to be used in your roar. You want some twine, also going to be used. Uh, to go through the hole, some scissors, and then a lighter of some sort or something simply to heat up the needle. The first part of making your lion's roar is heating up the needle, and we do this so that whenever we poke the hole through the head, we don't warp the head. You only need to do it for about five to ten seconds. As close to the center as possible. In order to make the hole big enough, you might need to do it a couple of times. Children under 18 should do this under adult supervision. We're working with a rather small needle, so if you have a larger needle or perhaps um, a paper clip, if you can sharpen it down enough, you won't have to do it as many times. All right. So after you have your hole made with your needle, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your thread, um, which Mayor has here, and you're just gonna thread it through. There we go. Um, you want to thread through maybe about two feet. And then once you finish that, you're going to cut your rope. And then on the underside of the head, I'm going to pull it back through. On the underside of the head, you just want to make a hole, excuse me, a knot big enough to stop your thread from going through the hole. Um, and it's also going to be weighing the thread down slightly, so it's not going all over the place. Really, the length of thread you need is up to the performer. Because um, what you're going to be doing is just simply pulling on the rope. So depending on the piece, I know for Verez you have a significant amount of actual rope pulling for a period of length of time. So it really depends on the note value. Um, and there you have a fully constructed lion's roar. And then what happens next is you'll stick it on the floor tom, which if Mayor wants to bring out our fully finished product. So here we have our fully formed and finished lion's roar, and Mayor is gonna show us how to do it. You can either use rosin, or um, another popular way of doing it, which Mayor will be doing, um, is using tissue and water, um, and that way it'll glide across the rope. <laughs> Let's try that again. That was a oh, they ripped apart. That was more like a cub roar. Yeah. Will using a cloth be better, maybe? Sounding like a lion's roar, hence the name. And that's how you make a lion's roar. Yep. Thanks, Mayor. <laughs>